This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a retro sci-fi laser scan portrait. I provided this dark wall for our background. Its link is in my video's description or project files. Feel free to use another image if you like, but just make sure it's dark so our laser grid scan can be seen. Before we begin, if you haven't already subscribed to Blue Lightning TV, click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. Open a photo of someone or something that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. We'll place our subject over the background by pressing V to open our Move tool and dragging it onto the tab of the background. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Reduce its opacity so we can see the background under it. To resize our subject, open the Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height and drag the scrubby slider on either the width or the height to the right or left. To reposition it, go inside the transform's bounding box and drag your subject. Then press Enter or Return twice or click the check mark at the top. Increase its opacity back to 100%. If our subject extends beyond the visible boundaries of the background, we'll need to crop them off. Doing this ensures that the displacement map that we'll be adding later will be correctly sized. Press Ctrl or Command A to select our document, and go to Image and Crop. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Next, we'll separate our subject from its background by making a selection around the subject. For this example, let's use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using CC 2018 or later, press the Select Subject button, which automatically detects our subject and makes a selection around it. If you're using an earlier version, drag the Quick Selection tool over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Go to Select. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, click Refine Edge. If you're using a later version, click Select and Mask. If you prefer to use Refine Edge, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you want to watch them, I provided their links as well. Check Smart Radius, which detects smooth and hard edges. To adjust the size of your brush, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over soft or feathery areas. Feather it 2 pixels, make the contrast 100%, and shift the edge to approximately minus 28%. Check Decontaminate Colors. This prevents the background from leaching into the edges of our subject. Make the amount 100% and output it to a new layer with Layer Mask. We'll convert our subject into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We'll use this copy to create a displacement map. The displacement map will bend the grid that we'll be creating in a minute to conform to the contours of the tones of our subject. Since displacement maps look best when they're blurred, go to Filter, Blur, and Smart Blur. The radius determines how far the filter searches for dissimilar pixels to blur, while the threshold determines how different the pixel's values must be before they're blurred. Let's make the radius 3, the threshold 25, and the quality low. As I click on the preview window, you can see the before and after. Go back to Filter, Blur, and this time click Gaussian Blur. Blur it 3 pixels. Click the icon at the upper right and click Duplicate Layer. In the Document list, click New and name it Displacement. We now have a separate document of the same name. In addition to blurring it, we'll remove its color to get the best results. Click the Adjustment Layer icon 
and click black and white. Go to File and Save As. Save it to your desktop for quick access as a Photoshop PSD file. Then click Save. If you see this message, just click OK. Now that we saved it, we can close the document as well as delete the layer that we used for the displacement map. Either drag it to the trash or, in later versions, press the Delete key. Next, we'll create the grid. Create a new document by going to File and New. Make the width and height 10 pixels each, the resolution 150 pixels per inch, and the background white. It's extremely small, so we'll fit it onto our screen by pressing Ctrl or Command-0. Press V to open your Move tool, since it'll be easier to navigate our cursor at this magnification. Click the lock icon to unlock the background, and double-click it to open the Layer Style window. Click Stroke. If the box isn't black, click it, and when the color picker opens, pick black. Make the size 1 pixel the position inside, the blend mode normal, and the opacity 100%. Click the icon at the upper right and click Flatten Image. Go to Edit and define Pattern. Name it Displace Grid. Now that we've saved it as a pattern, we can close it. When this window pops up, just click No. We'll make a new layer below the active layer by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill it with black, and since our foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Hide the top layer and click the adjustment layer icon. Click Pattern. Open the pattern presets and scroll to the bottom. You should see the pattern you just saved. Click it and make sure the scale is 100%. We'll merge the pattern with the black background by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Invert the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Then convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non destructively. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 20 each, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Click the displacement file you saved earlier and click Open. Since the grid became displaced 10 pixels vertically and horizontally, we'll size it up to fill our document. But before we do, shift click your subject above the grid to make it active as well. Open your transform tool. If you see this message, just click OK. Go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out until the displaced grid fills your document. If you're using a later version, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. Then press Enter or Return. Control click or command click your subject to make a selection of its shape. Click the grid layer to make it active, and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the grid. We'll make a new layer below the active layer by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. Fill it with black. Open the channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Click the circular icon at the bottom, which makes a selection of your visible image. Open back the Layers panel and hide the grid and the black layer under it. Make the grid active and make a new layer above it. Click the foreground color and pick a bright green. Notice your foreground color is now that same color. To fill the selection with that color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Then deselect it. Make the subject layer visible and active. Change the blend mode to soft light and reduce its opacity to 
Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White. Adjustment layers affect all of the layers below them in the Layers panel. However, we want it to affect just our subject and not the green grid below it. To do this, we'll need to clip the adjustment layer to the subject. Click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Next, we'll mask out the bottom of our laser grid portrait so it cuts off at the bottom of the wall. To do this, let's group the layers that comprise our grid portrait into a folder by shift clicking the green grid to make it and the layers above it active and clicking the folder icon. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the folder. Open your rectangular marquee tool and go to a bottom corner. Drag across a rectangle whose top is just above the floor. We'll soften the selection's edge by going to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it 3 pixels. We're going to fill the selection with black, and since our layer mask is active, it'll actually fill that area of the layer mask with black. Press Alt or Option plus Delete. Essentially, layer masks are like stencils. White reveals and black conceals. We can now deselect it. Open the folder and make the subject active. Double click it to open the layer style window. Click outer glow and the color box. When the color picker opens, pick a bright green. The blend mode is normal and make the opacity 40%. The technique is softer. The spread is zero and make the size 30 pixels. The contour is linear and the range is 50%. Lastly, we'll add a reflection on the floor and a glow on the wall. Control click or command click the subject to make a selection of its shape. Notice it includes the entire subject, including the area that we removed from the floor. To remove that area of our selection, go to the top layer mask and press Alt Control Shift on Windows or Option Command Shift on a Mac as you click the layer mask. Make the green grid layer active and make a copy of it by pressing Control or Command J. Right now, the copy is inside the folder. However, we want to place it below the folder. We could either drag it down or press Control or Command and the left bracket key twice. We know it's below the folder when we see that the layer we jump down is below and to the left of the layer above it. To save space in the Layers panel, let's close the folder. We'll use this copy of the green grid as the reflection on the floor. First, let's convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. Go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 3 pixels. Open your Transform tool. As before, if you see this message, it's just letting us know that the blur will be turned off as we use the Transform tool. Just click OK. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag it down until the top of it is flushed with the bottom of the original grid. Pressing Shift kept it perfectly vertical as you dragged it. We're going to angle the bottom grid to the perspective of the floor. But to do this, we need to zoom out so we can see the entire Transform tool. Press Ctrl or Command 0. Go to a bottom corner and press and hold Alt Control Shift on Windows or Option Command Shift on a Mac as you drag it out approximately this much. Go to the bottom middle anchor point and press and hold the Shift key as you drag it up approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. To zoom back in, press Control or Command and the Plus key a couple of times. If you want to drag the reflection down a bit more, Press V to open your Move tool and drag it down, or you can press the down arrow on your keyboard. Next, we'll fade out the reflection gradually the further it is from the wall. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the reflection layer. Open your Gradient tool and make sure the Linear Gradient icon is active. Open the Gradient Picker and click the black and white preset. Go to approximately here 
and press and hold the Shift key as you drag your tool up to the top of the reflection and release. Make the reflection layer active and reduce its opacity to 60%. Lastly, we'll add a reflective glow on the wall. We'll make a new layer below the active layer by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. Open your brush tool and pick a soft round brush. Make its size 1300 pixels, its hardness 0%, and the opacity and flow both 100%. Go to the center and click once. Change its blend mode to overlay. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.